Anthony, can you describe the emotion you were feeling when you drove that ball in the third to see it go out? Um, no, I, I think I pretty much blacked out as soon as I saw it go over the fence. But um, no, we just want to keep putting pressure on them. And uh, I think everyone had confidence in everyone in the lineup that someone was going to get the big hit. And we've been putting, having such good at-bats and putting such good swings on the ball that, I mean, we, we just felt like it was only a matter of time. What did you think it was about your at bats tonight, your approach tonight, that that yielded the positive results? Um, no, I mean we were just prepared. Um, they're they they did a bullpen game, and they're it's it's kind of tough to prepare for, and their guys have really good stuff. But um, we just had so much confidence in in everyone going in that um, we just couldn't wait to play. Go to Stephanie in the first row on your right, Anthony. On the uh, list of coolest moments of your life, where does being on the field for the ninth inning while you're uh, entire, while the entire stadium chants your name and you're about to win a World Series game rank? Yeah, number one, definitely number one. Even ahead of hitting the home run or the grand slam? Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> Go to Ron then John. With everything today and the home run and the chanting, do you think back at all about 15 years ago? You're standing there at the parade watching them now. Um, not yet. Hopefully when we win the World Series and I'm with family, we could all reflect on everything. But um, it was just a big game. We just wanted to go 1-0 and today and win today and see where, see where it took us. And How did you shake off the early home run by Freeman and just not get too down over that? No, I mean, we're just going to play our game. We feel like if we do that and we play the way we know we're capable of playing, um, they can – they're obviously a good team, and they can do what they, they do and whatever they want to do. But, um, we, like I said, we just have so much confidence in us that um, if, we play, if we play that way, we feel like we'll win. Go to John in the second row on your right. All your uh, old minor league affiliates are having a lot of fun on Twitter with pictures of you and Austin from back in the day. How fun is it to share that with him, both the regular stuff all year and also on a night like tonight? Yeah, I mean, um, our friendship, it, it's not really a friendship anymore. It's more of a brotherhood and we've been we've been through it all together the highest of the highs and at some points the lowest lows he's my first call my last call um and i i mean like i said it's more than a friendship it's a brotherhood and i know he has my back through thick and thin and i like, like you said to have a moment like that for him to have a moment like that um is special but to do it together um you can't can't trade it for anything but chris in the second row on your left how many times have you envisioned having a night like this growing up? Um, probably every night. <laughs> yeah. What is is it also surreal to have you know after the game you're interviewed by Derek Jeter? Obviously, you looked up to him. Just is is it surreal to have that happen to you? Just dreaming about having a night like this as well. Um, yeah, it is pretty crazy to think about, and um, it's uh my dream but it was all my friend's dreams all my cousin's dreams um probably my sister's dream too but um but winning the world series was first and foremost by far nothing else compares so still got a lot more work to do but gary right there during that interview with jeter it looked like uh david ortiz tried to give you something what what'd you do with that shirt um it's yet to be determined what i'll probably do but i, I got it in my locker I can't wear it. It's got him and Red Sox stuff on it. So. Fair enough. <laughs> we'll go to Dave right behind you, Gary. Anthony, before your night got a lot better, the first time out there, you seemed like you were pretty frustrated with yourself for not scoring on Austin's hit. To to go from that frustration to to what you did, like what, how down were you feeling at, at at that point before you turned it all around? Um, yeah, I mean that's completely on me. I get, it's it's not a hard read. Um, when we practice, one that little leaguers make, but um, Doogie picked me right back up. I mean, I was frustrated with myself because I feel like I got to do better, but I was confident in Doogie that he was going to pick me up. Doogie, Glaber, anyone that was hitting after, and I feel like having that feeling and knowing that, you obviously, um, everyone holds themselves accountable and to a really high standard, but just having the feeling that regardless of what happens, um, your teammate's going to pick you up. It just helps you play. And that's gone before you step to the plate again, the, the next inning, right? Yeah. You, you got it. Up front of your right, Brian. Anthony, you understand what this team's up against right now. What gave you confidence coming into today that you could have a night like tonight? The guys. 
um, we've been through so much the whole year. Um, we're not going to go down easy at all. And then just to, for you personally, what do you think a night like tonight means? Um, no, I mean, I'm just trying to do my best and help the team win. And it, the mindset, the approach, the preparation never changed regardless of any of the results. And I think that's what helps any player um, help, help the team win when you have confidence in yourself and in the guys around you and you feel like the guys around you have confidence in you. I feel like you could do anything. We'll stay there with Eric. Anthony, were you were you looking slider? That if uh, no, I was looking fastball, but I saw him the night before and had a pretty good idea um, where I wanted the pitchers to start. The uh, left center aisle. Anthony, how did the mood change in the dugout and in the stadium after your grand slam? Um, no, I mean, we were confident in the dugout um, the whole game, even after the first e first inning, after we went down a couple runs. But um, we just want to, I mean, it's my first playoffs, but these have been probably the craziest games we've ever been a part of. So it's just foot on the gas always. Uh, far back on your right, Jorge. Anthony, how many friends and family members do you think you had in, in the crowd? As many as they let us. My mom does all the tickets, so I don't even I don't even know really who got who got what. But I'm uh, I know she was grinding for as many as she could get. Go to Barry in the third row on your right, and then Greg. Anthony, can you trace your family's Yankee fandom? How how far back does it go? Um, I mean, from I, I think I've probably told the story maybe a couple of times, but my grandfather really, um, it. It, it it's more than the Yankees are more than just a team or an organization for him because um, uh, his grandfather fought in World War II when um, he was little and by the time he got back um, his mom basically told him like this is your dad he didn't know him didn't recognize him didn't anything and the way he says it the way he got to know and get to know his father was he sat on his lap every single night and they listened to the Yankees together. So um, for him, it's it's more than more than sports. All right, Anthony, congratulations. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.